Hey everybody, Aaron Cowan, Sage Dynamics. In this video, we're gonna talk about heat mapping your draw stroke. I have quite a few videos on best concepts and principles for developing your techniques. Uh, some practice supplements for the Red Dot handgun. Uh, they're becoming more and more popular. Uh, it seems like I mention that any time I do a video because I just keep seeing more and more shooters start to adopt the Red Dot when they realize that it's significantly advantageous over iron sights. Uh, one of the problems that has plagued shooters from the very beginning is acquiring the dot on the draw stroke. And this is something I've talked about in other videos, so I'm not going to go too deep into it here. This video specifically is talking about developing the discipline for a disciplined initial dot acquisition. So as I draw the gun and I press it out, I want my dot to consistently go to close as possible the same point. And I want to see how much travel is in that point so I have an idea of how well my technique is working, how well my fundamentals are working, if my grip pressure is equal, if my presentation, my eye-hand coordination, which drives the gun to the target, my proprioception, which brings the red dot in front of my dominant eye, lines everything up and allows me to get that initial hit. Because from a self-defense standpoint, that initial hit's very important. All hits are important. But that initial hit is going to put the, the fight, if you will, on more fair terms, uh, depending on the situation you find yourself in. When we practice these things on a live fire range, we gotta come up with some kind of drill that quantifies what we're trying to accomplish. For me, I use one inch circles. I like one inch circles because they're small. And if you can consistently hit in or near a one inch circle with your red dot handgun, especially at those closer distances, then your draw stroke and your initial dot acquisition is working very well. We want to add more metrics though. So one thing I do is I use my Eleanor target, but I just shoot the one inch circle. What I'm going to do is I'm going to come up with a par time and I'm going to set a distance. If I'm just working on isolating the skill of dot acquisition and acquiring and presenting, and uh, another advantage to this, especially for those of you who use the 25 yard zero on your red dot, which is the zero I recommend for handguns, uh, you do have to incorporate a little bit of a holdover and you have to learn that holdover in order to hit that one inch circle. Some people can take that holdover or leave it. They're like, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's within an inch, so who cares? My feeling is I want the bolt to go exactly where I want it to go, not an inch low. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to establish a time, I'm going to establish a distance, and I already have my accuracy standard, which is going to be that one inch circle on the Eleanor target. Uh, you can, generally you do these close because the further back you go, the more human factors become an issue, but I generally shoot it from three, then I'll shoot it from five, sometimes I shoot it from seven. Keeping in mind, my point of aim is that one inch circle every single time. So my general part time, and you guys can kind of play with the part time however you want, I generally go with a two second part time. From drawing from concealment, two seconds is pretty generous, but we're holding ourselves to the standard of a one inch hit, which is a very precise point of aim, point of impact. So all I'm gonna do to heat map my presentation is pretty simple. I'm gonna fire one round per string from the holster on the shot timer. I'm gonna shoot this from concealment, what I'm wearing today, button up shirt, which has some, has some unique properties for draw stroke that a more elastic t-shirts don't have, but that's what I'm wearing, so that's what I'm gonna shoot. I'm gonna be using my Agency Arms modified Glock 17C, shooting 124 grain ammunition, in case you wanted to know all of that. And I'm shooting from a traditional Cadex Ulster Armadillo Concealment Lux. I'm gonna do it 10 times, so string, 10 strings of one round each. And what I'm looking for ultimately is a heat map, how consistent I am delivering those rounds. The more you shoot it, the larger your heat map, the more data you get as you go through this. So uh, on the culmination, or I guess the completion of these 10 rounds, I should have a pretty good idea of how well my technique is working. So this is what we ended up with. Remember our point of aim was that one inch circle, fired 10 rounds, 10 strings of one round each on the shot timer, the part time of two seconds. Didn't fail that shot timer, or I should say didn't miss that part time on any of the strings. Some took a little bit longer than others because my dot wasn't perfectly centered in the window and it's something I need to clean up if I'm trying to hit this precise of a point of aim. So even at three yards, it can be very difficult to hit something this small once you put yourself under that range stress, that artificial stress that we get from time compression. 
when we give ourselves a par time, and humans are very bad at kind of tracking time in their head, especially when we get down into seconds, uh, if I make any mistake in my technique, clearing the cover garment, driving the gun out, getting my support hand in the gun, having my dot not centered in the window, all of those things are going to add up and could lead me to rush the shot. Because if I make a mistake early in the draw stroke, I may try to make that time up and completely screw up the shot. So overall, I'm pretty happy with my performance. One thing that's definitely noticeable about this is it's very centered. Even though I did drop some rounds low, uh, maybe didn't hold over quite correctly, maybe held over uh, a little too low, so it ended up in a low hit, I'm very centered, which means my grip technique is working correctly. I have equal pressure on the gun, so I don't have any shots going left or going right. Trigger control, of course, can attribute to left-right hits, but if your grip is really vice-like, the trigger technique is going to matter less, especially at close distances. And I was able to meet the part-time. Now, I could challenge myself further and drop that part-time down to 1.5. Any lower than that, and I'm going to be de de depending on the gods to align everything correctly in order for me to get the hit consistently. So I've run this before on a one second part time, fired 10 rounds, one round strings from the holster, uh, and I was not nearly as successful because one second is not a lot of time to get all those things done. And in the grand scheme of things, if you can hit this tight, within two seconds, you're doing good. If you can do it in 1.5 seconds, you're doing good. If you can do it in one second, you are consistently above average as far as skill set goes. And that's kind of putting a, a less emotional uh, added, added time on that. I would say if you can do this in a second, then you're, you're damn near omnipotent. That was at three yards, which is kind of a really good distance to start things off at. What about five? Uh, it's only adding two more yards, but it could show you some deficiencies you don't notice at three. And this keeps going back from there. Eventually, Human mechanics become such a large factor that you kind of have to start considering maybe, depending on the par time, you might want a more realistic point of aim. You might increase your target size, if you will, or your desired point of impact. But I think five yards, one inch circle is still very doable, even with that two second par time. If you want to add a little bit of time, you can. Again, par times are somewhat arbitrary. Uh, you should be pushing yourself, but you don't necessarily want to start trying for race car speed if you're still getting a feel for the RDS. But this will give you a good idea of how consistent you are at the same task in repetition. I'll go ahead and shoot it from five yards. I'm going to keep that same two, uh, two second par time. Uh, still shooting the same ammo, same gun from concealment, running off that par time one round per string. And you'll notice immediately that the consistency is close. But it's not quite the same. I'm starting to throw around slightly to the right and slightly low. And this is getting really specific into point of aim, point of impact for this desired target size at this desired distance. But the fact remains, when we see it shooting at five yards versus three, we start to see some discrepancies, some inconsistencies that we didn't see at three. And I only moved back two yards. So this is what we ended up with. It's still a very respectable group. Uh, of course, you know, somebody else might feel differently than that uh, for a two second part time. Uh, this shows me that I've got some inconsistencies probably in my grip, uh, which I know are there. Uh, I've got pre existing condition in my sports side hand right now, which does cause me to occasionally uh, push a little right, push a little low. And it's something that, uh, well, I'm dealing with. Uh, so uh, your, your range of motion, medical condition, health. Uh, how you're feeling that day, what gun you're shooting, what grain of ammunition you're shooting, the weather, all these things can factor into how we see inconsistency from place to place. Humans also have this concept um, kind of kind of referred to as impulse variability, meaning even if we we're super uh, efficient at doing a task, if we do it 10 times in a row, we may screw it up once and not even know why. I like deliberate practice. I like to think about every time I shoot, I'm doing maintenance on one of my techniques. So if I'm just drawing and shooting one round, I'm consciously focused on clearing the cover garment on the first rep and maybe the master grip on the second rep, support hand joining the gun as I push the gun out on the third rep, dot acquisition fourth rep, so on and so forth. So every single step of the process to fire that one round of ammunition, I can isolate consciously, let the other stuff run on autopilot and see if there's anything wrong with it. And of course the target's gonna tell me if things are working correctly, if things are working incorrectly. And every now and then, or sometimes more than every now and then, uh, we see a little bit of inconsistencies in our technique. So now I've got a pretty good heat map of how consistently I'm placing my dot exactly where I want it when I press the trigger and I'm giving myself that time limit. The reason for the time limit, of course, is if I don't have a time limit, I can clean up my dot presentation, take all the time in the world, so to speak, and I should be able to shoot 10 out of 10 in the black. If I can't, then I definitely have a fundamentals related issue. When we compare the two targets, there's not a huge discrepancy overall. Only two yards back, but there is a noticeable difference, and that's something we have to work into our practice. 
I've talked about heat mapping in previous videos. It's something you're definitely going to see me bring up again. In fact, I've had enough people ask me about it, especially person-to-person uh, -person at courses, like, hey, what about rifles type stuff? So in the future, I'll do some rifle type stuff with things that I heat map. Um, I like to be, you know, repetitious to to get a good idea of what maintenance is working, what maintenance isn't working, what fundamentals need adjustment. One of the problems that we sometimes have as shooters, I'm guilty of it just like anybody else is, is we go to the range and we tend to work on what we're already good at. So pushing ourselves is something that uh, maybe you lean on YouTube for. You look at people like myself and other instructors and say, hey, what are they doing? What do they recommend to, to increase my skill set? And while a YouTube video is not a replacement for training, it is a good practice supplement to give you ideas that maybe you hadn't thought of. So I would take this to the range. It doesn't take a lot of ammunition. You can get a lot of good data just with 10 rounds of ammo, and it literally only takes the time to set up the target. Uh, run the shot timer. Something you can run in an indoor range. You don't necessarily have access to something like this. Uh, indoor ranges get a little tricky when it comes to shot timers sometimes, but there's ways around that. Uh, technology that exists, something you can do. But I highly recommend you check this out just to get an idea of how clean your presentation is. If you're not able to meet this standard, and I'm not saying this is the pinnacle, but try it out. Do the two-second part-time at three, do the two-second part-time at five yards, shoot for that one in circle. You don't need this target, or you, although you can download it off the sagedynamics.org website for free. You can also just get one in play, past pasters and shoot at those. Uh, but do 10 rounds, one, one round per string, and see what your heat map looks like. I'm Eric Count with Sage Dynamics. Train accordingly.